In the last lecture, you may remember bringing in the terrain from World Machine. Right now, what we're going to do is bring in materials. So what you're going to do is double click this terrain material that we made. And this is the material editor. You haven't used it before. I'm going to full screen it by clicking that up there. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to essentially need to create layers for each of the materials that we plan on using in this terrain. And they're going to need to blend them together and then stick them into their correct outputs. This node editor is very similar to Blender's node editor. It's also very similar to World Machine's node editor. Now, since we haven't gotten any textures for these yet, I'm just going to have you use a constant three vector node. Click it and drag it into the scene. You're going to need three of these total. So one, two, three. The way I did that is clicking on it, control C, and then pressing control V to paste. So what a constant three vector essentially is, is an RGB color. The R, G, and B values are the three constants that they are referencing here. Next, you're gonna find the landscape layer blend node, drag that right in, and you're gonna to need to go into the details here and click plus on layers three times. And for the first one, we're going to call it grass since that is the highest priority. On the second one, it's going to be rock. And then on the third one, it's going to need to be called flow. Awesome. So now we have our layer blend set up. Plug this output into the base color. The base color signifies what is going to come out in the color channel on this material. And then take these three and drag them in to their respective slots. Now you're going to want to take the layer grass, turn it green if you want. This is just so you can visualize how the layers are going to come out. And then layer rock, I'm going to make it a dark grayish navy blue. And once you got that, press the save button. And then you can X out of the material editor. And we're going to apply this to the terrain itself. So if you remember this process, it's great. Go to the landscape tab. If you imported it in the last lecture, it'll all still be here. Except now there's a new thing. It's a layers and there's three array elements. So what you're going to have to do here is click the plus icon next to each of these, choose weight blended layer, and then click OK. And do that for all of them. This is just so they can get the info in here. And then you're going to need to click the three dots for each of these. And then you're going to choose the correct image for each of these. So for grass, it's going to be grass. For rock, it's going to be rock. And for flow, it's going to be flow. Now that we have all that going, it's time to import the terrain. So click import, and you'll see everything is turned into a checker pattern. But that means that shaders are still compiling. You can see there's 20 left. And now we can see how we did. So the green part is where all of the grass is going to go, and the gray part is where all of the rock is going to go. It looks good. So what we're going to have to do now is create some materials to substitute out for the green grass and the gray rock. But first, to get a sense of scale, press the play button, and you can see just how huge this environment is. And if it's looking a little triangulated to you, it probably won't once we build the lighting and add the materials in with normals. And remember that you still have all of those techniques with foliage and props to apply to this. So this is just a baseline. If you were going to create an open world, you'd want to create so much more than just this. And I'll go over some more techniques with you in just a second. So the first thing you're going to want to do is find something that you will use as a ground and something that you will use as a cliff face. So I'm going to go non-traditional. I'm going to choose a Japanese mossy ground for my grass. And this could really be anything. If you want, you could make the ground all fallen oak leaves and then make sure that you find a cliff face so I could look up cliff and choose something in here but remember we're likely not going to see a lot of displacement in this so I'm just going to choose a basic rock texture something like this could be cool so I'm just gonna download it you may want to grab a few options just in case once you've got your assets just select them you can even select one and then control click the other one and that will select all of them and then you can export both of them at once or however many you chose It'll give you the message once it's exported successfully. And now we play the waiting game. 
because these textures, as you're probably well aware right now, take a while to export into Unreal. Now that we've got our assets in Unreal, it's time to do some serious work on this material. So I'm gonna go into the Megascans folder under Surface, and we're gonna start replacing these color textures with actual textures. So I'm actually just going to click drag to create a box select and then delete both of those colors. Next, navigate to the folders where you kept your materials and then drag the albedo textures into here. Albedo just means it's a basic color texture. Now drag the RGB pin into the layer grass for the one you chose for your ground. And then take the rock albedo texture and drag that into layer rock. Now we're gonna save it just to make sure everything is looking all right in the editor. And once the shaders are done compiling, this is what we have. Now, right off the bat, it looks pretty good. If I play it, which is the true test, it looks all right, it looks really good. So it can obviously be improved, and here's how we're gonna do that. Basically, I'm going to take this layer blend node, I'm gonna take all this stuff, drag it over here, I'm gonna control C the layer blend and control V to paste it, I'm gonna put it right over here so that we have a normal input. And so now I'm gonna take the normal maps, those are the purple looking textures, and essentially what they do is they tell the renderer to reflect light off at an odd angle to give the illusion of more geometry than there actually is. So I'm gonna drag the rock one in, drag the RGB into layer rock, and then same for the ground material. I'm just going to drag the normal texture in, drag the RGB pin into the layer grass. But let's not stop there. There's still another texture that we have yet to attach, and that is the roughness texture. So I'm gonna attach another layer blend into the roughness pin in the terrain material. And I'm going to drag in the roughness textures from the material folders and drag the RGB pins into their respective slots on the layer blend. Now that you have all that, click save, and let's see what it did to the material. Ah, much better, more realistic at least. The only problem is now, it looks like a checkered pattern off on this mountain here. Even though up close, it looks very, very cool. I'm just gonna play it to see what it looks like in the, oh yes, that looks very nice. But now, we're going to adjust one more thing and that is the tiling. In your nodes, search for landscape layer coords, stands for coordinates, and then drag that thing right in here. And then here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take this pin, drag it into the UVs slot for every single texture that we've imported. It might be tedious, but it will be worth it because we will be able to change the tiling of this texture with just one node. Once you got it all connected, click on the texture coordinates node and then change the mapping scale and the details over here to something like four. Hit save so that we can see what it looks like in the editor. Now this is clearly much less tiling, we're gonna to have to come up with a solution for this. Perhaps it means using a different material for this specific rock face, because I think in places like this, it looks extremely good. I'll even play it so that we can see. Oh, and the ground looks much better, definitely. If I go up on any of these rock areas right here, that looks incredible. That looks absolutely stunning. But then if we look in the at the mountains over here, it looks less so. So there's multiple things we can do to fix that. Either we adjust the tiling even more, or we use fog to blur out this area in the distance, or we use a different material that doesn't look as bad when tiled, or there's going to be something else that we can do. And you're going to learn about it very soon when we dive into Quixel Mixer. You're going to be able to create textures that span over a much larger distance so that you don't have to worry about tiling every one meter. But overall, I would say this is a definite win. This looks epic. And remember, you're not just going to be using just textures. You're also gonna to need to put foliage everywhere, props everywhere, so that it's actually a full level and not just an imported landscape. This pathway right here especially is super cool. So let me go over with you a few more functions that you can use with this terrain tool. The first of which is going to be painting. If you select the landscape tab, you can go to another paint tab and here you're able to just select a layer and begin painting on some of this texture. So you can adjust your brush with the square brackets. So you can adjust the brush by sliding this here. And then if you just start clicking, you can begin drawing that texture wherever you had your mouse. 
And right now the tool strength is set at 0 0.3. If you set it at 1, then it will be at full strength and do whatever you want it to. So use this if you're working on another path or if you're cleaning up an area of the map where the player will obviously be going a lot, such as this path right here, I see some rock that is stuck in the pathway here, but I'm just gonna get rid of that quickly, easily, painlessly by just clicking and dragging in that path area. And now the unwanted rock is essentially gone. But you don't need to rely on that. Remember, you'll keep getting better at World Machine and figuring out what settings to use for that. Now, another great tool is the sculpting brush. You can actually edit this terrain after the fact, and you can use your square brackets to adjust the brush size, and you can just start clicking to create more terrain. Perhaps you need this area to be flat. You could select this, choose flatten, and then you can begin flattening out an entire area. I mean, maybe you need a city. Whatever your cause is, the flatten brush is a good one. You're just going to want to make sure that you smooth out the area afterwards with the smooth brush. It actually works very well. You don't want there to be any huge visible just gashes in the land. That's a no-no when it comes to level design. But sometimes you need a flat area, and this is how you can achieve that. It doesn't look all that unnatural when you compare it with the rest of the area, as long as you smooth it in.